Over to McNeil to the left. Now, Duhon in motion right. All alone is Bob Tucker. Tucker out of bounds at the three-yard line. Well, hello! Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the Gridiron. And before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you. If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below or maybe even share this video, it would mean so much to me. But anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. Well, the New York Giants, they have the um, fourth easiest schedule in the upcoming season. So, you know, it's got some good parts and it's got some bad parts. We'll discuss that. And then uh, they're on track anyway uh, to get uh, two compensatory picks next year's draft, which would be absolutely huge because, you know, <laughs> yeah, this is the Dable Shane era, right? And this is basically year one, so... Next year, once again, the draft is going to be absolutely huge for them. And if they can get two more picks in next year's draft, that's going to be absolutely huge. So now what you see here, all right. Now, as far as with the, the Giants <clears throat> having the fourth easiest schedule, I mean, there's, there's really not, not a lot bad to say about that. Uh, there are eh, a couple things, but one of the things, I mean, as far as the good, I mean, a lot of good, a lot of good with that. Is that, you know, obviously, without question, there's winnable games. Now, if we start looking at their schedule here, okay, now, the only thing we do know, okay, is we know uh, they're playing <laughs> at Green Bay, uh, but uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London, England, that's on Oct Sunday, October 9th, be at 930 in the morning. All right. Um, so that's the only game that we know, um the day and the time of. This week coming up, we're gonna we'll know the rest of the schedule. I think it's the twelfth. So today is the eighth. So what do we got? The th Thursday. This Thursday on the NFL that well, I, I guess it's probably coming out on, on a few different channels, but this Thursday. So in four days we'll know the rest of the schedule. But this is this is the the teams are playing. All right. Now the the Washington Commanders, right? They got obviously got to play them twice. Uh, usually we, you know, we're rather successful with them. We weren't last year, but um, and of course, then we got to play the Cowboys. You know, I always have a, always have a hard time beating them. But then uh, you look at you look at Jacksonville, right? Even that it's in Jacksonville. I mean, we can win. I'm not saying we're going to win it. We could win it. Uh, Minnesota, that would be a tough game, but in Minnesota, but you know, we, you know. Well, we can we can win that one. Once again, Cowboys. It's gonna be a tough game. And of course, then we got the two against the Eagles. All right. You know, it's always have a hard time beating the Eagles. And we you know, we beat them last year. We can beat them again. I'm not saying we're gonna sweep them or not, but we could beat them. We got to play the Bears at home, right? Very winnable game. Then we gotta play the Lions at home. Very winnable game. Then we gotta play the Texans at home. Very winnable game. Then we got to play the Colts. All right, they have a new look, yeah, new quarterback and all that. But yeah, I mean, they'll be you know they'll be well represented. But uh, you know we have a shot. Certainly have a shot at winning that one. I said once again the Eagles at the link. Be a tough game uh, on the road in Tennessee. That'd be a tough one. Uh, uh, home against the Ravens. That'd be a tough one. Um, then we got uh, Carolina. All right, we beat them last year. Right. Uh, we can certainly beat them again. And then we have uh, the Seahawks, the Russell Wilson West Seahawks. So once again, last time, actually the last time we went out to Seattle. Remember Colt McCoy, backup quarterback, when we went out there and we beat them. So yeah, if you look at this schedule, you know, there are some winnable games here. I'm not saying, you know, we're 10 and 7, 11 and 6. I'm not even saying we're going to have a 500 record. But, I mean, there are some winnable games here. I was saying the same thing last year, too. I'm like, you know what? We could possibly be maybe 8-9 or 9 or nine. We won 4-13. So. But there's some winnable games here. So that's 
you know, having an easy schedule. That's a good thing. Uh, another thing that's good, all right, is that, you know, um, it's, you know, we don't have the strongest division, especially as far as trying to maybe make the playoffs. Um, you know, maybe not even, maybe, maybe not winning the division, but, you know, maybe get, maybe in being in second place, possibly. Um, the, I mean, the commanders, well, we'll see. Um, I'd love, I, I would love for the Cowboys just to go belly up and just have a horrible season. But, I mean, with the Eagles, I have to wait and see. But, I mean, the Eagles were, did well last year, except the thing was that the Eagles beat every team that they beat pretty much was a bad team. They 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 did not go and beat good teams. So, I mean, so I mean, we don't have the strongest division, right? So I'm saying it's so maybe not even as far as maybe winning the division. But I'm saying just as far as maybe making the trying to try and make the playoffs. You know, possibly you know, you know the teams aren't the strongest. So maybe we have a shot at maybe making, you know, get maybe this second place, maybe. All right. Another thing, if we look here, which is which is good, all right, as you look here, okay, the hardest schedules, all right, you got the NFC West. So you got the Rams up here. You got the Cardinals. Uh, you got the 49ers are up here. See, the NFC West. Three of the top five from the NFC West. Seattle is down here, right? So this NFC West has got four of the top 11 hardest schedules. The um, So as far as trying to maybe make the play, you know, I mean, battling another team for maybe a um, a wild card spot or so. You know, you got that, that division there. It's going to be good teams. They have a very hard schedule. The other thing is the NFC South. They got a tough schedule, if you'll notice right here. Right, you got the Bucks, all right. You got the Saints, number tied for number seven. You got the Falcons, number nine, and you got the Panthers. So the NFC South, they got four out of the top twelve hardest schedules. So, um, so basically, the 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 West and the the South, very tough schedules. So that might help as far as Giants maybe trying to make the playoffs. I mean, if the Giants somehow got the maybe nine and eight. Maybe uh, going crazy, I know. Maybe ten and seven with these divisions here having tough schedules. All right, maybe the Giants can slip. Maybe can slip in the play. I'm just saying, maybe. I'm not saying we're going to do it, but I mean, here, here you go. All right. Now, thing is, the, the other good thing would be if the the, the Giants were say like nine and eight in the draft. The Chargers were nine and eight. Okay, so just say the Giants went nine and eight. The Chargers pick seventeenth in the draft. They would have a shot, shot. You know, what I mean, it maybe, especially if they wanted to maybe move up. If they were nine and eight, and if they were still a little bummed out about Daniel Jones, and they maybe wanted to try to get themselves a quarterback, being if they were nine and eight somehow, they'd have a shot. You know, maybe moving up. To get a quarterback, or say if they were eight and nine, they would be drafted maybe fifteenth. Right? They they would still have a shot. They wouldn't have a they wouldn't have a chance. Oh, where are we at here? There we go. All right, all right. So we got obviously Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. Right, these guys were pro football focused. They graded out number one of two hundred ninety four quarterbacks. All right, they both graded out a ninety two point two, and this was last year. Okay, that mean, he, uh, red shirt freshman. This guy's a sophomore. I mean, holy crap! And they're graded out at ninety two point two. So these guys here, uh, these uh, the, these guys ain't making out of the top five right here. So I mean, the only way for the Giants to get one of these guys, they would basically have to do a four and thirteen once again, or somewhere at five and twelve, maybe six and eleven, and maybe trade and maybe move up with somebody, you know, so they would have a hard time. I mean, if, if they were able to get one of these guys, they'd either have to trade a lot of picks away or they'd have to be really, really bad. We really don't want that to happen. But the other thing is that you got like here. Now, who's the guy been throwing the ball to Wandell Robinson? Who who got help Wandell get his uh, 104 receptions last year? Will Levis right here from Kentucky, right? The big guy. 
six three, nice size, six three two thirty two. Could be a little bit taller, but six three two thirty two. All right, he graded out at ninety point six. Very very good. All right, and he was a junior last year, so he'll be he'll be in the top. Probably I don't know, I'd say P, unless he tanks next year, I, I, he's probably going to top fifteen. I can see him. Tanner McKee, mm, uh, I'm 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 more. I like Tyler Van Dyke as well too. 6'4", 224, he, he, you know, he didn't grade out too well, but he was just a freshman, right, class, right, I mean, so he'll, uh, he'll, he'll be high on the boards next year, all right, so, say, so if the Giants wind up 8, 9, 9, and 8, something like that, they'll be right, you know, if they wind up 7 and 10, that would be a huge improvement from last year, right, that would be three games to the plus from last year, and they would be drafting maybe, you know, 13, somewhere around there. If they wanted to trade up to maybe get a quarterback or jump in front of another team, they would have to trade away their first, maybe trade to give them their second or something like that. But if they were still had their questions about Daniel Jones, they're not going to, you know, they're going to try to maybe draft themselves a quarterback. So if they, if they, if they you know, I said seven and 10, eight and nine, six and 11, that would be an improvement from last year. And they'd still have a shot at maybe getting a decent quarterback. So those, you know, the, the, the Obviously, a lot of good points to have an easy schedule. Easy, and you know, winning helps win. You know, um, you know. I mean, even if you're playing easy teams and you find ways to win, that gives you a lot of confidence. A lot, a lot of confidence, which is huge. Now, some of the, there's a couple of bad things, right? <laughs> As I showed you, all right. The NFC East all have easy schedules, and the reason why these guys have easy schedules than the Giants is because the the Giants are on their schedule. That's what bring. That's what bring it. That's what this number is so low for, because they're playing a four and third. They got two games against a four and thirteen team. That's why. That that's why there's there there are four sixty two and there are four sixty five. That's the only reason why. If you took the Giants off their schedule, right? The, all these teams would be up way up here, all right? But that the as I said, the problem is is that you know that now they're. The Giants were the worst team in the division last year. Um, the other, you know, all the teams you, you, you kind of figure they might improve now. Whether injuries affect other teams like it did the Giants last year, but you know, the Giants going to be battling it out with other teams with three other teams that have easy schedules. So that's going to, you know, that's not going to be, uh, you, know, uh, you know, ideal, shall we say, right? Um, and if, one of the other things would be. Yeah, I said it's not much bad really having an easy schedule. Is that if somehow the Giants do wind up making the playoffs, say somehow they 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 they're like nine and eight somehow, all right? They'll be drafted now. They'll be drafted in the twenties. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, which is a nice thing in one respect because the reason why you're drafted in the twenties that you made the playoffs, you had a winning record, you had a good season, right? Uh, the only bad thing about that would be obviously. Is that if you were trying to get a quarterback, you know, one of the the, the top elite quarterbacks, uh, you know what I'm saying? If you still had some questions about Daniel Jones, you can't keep having questions about him year after year after, year, you know. Somewhere along the line, you either got to keep the plug plugged into the wall or you, you pull the plug on the Daniel Jones project. So, I mean, so if you, you know, if you want to draft in 22, 23, 24, and you want to get one of those quarterbacks next year to move up is. It's gonna it's gonna cost you. I mean, this year it didn't really cost people because there was no quarterbacks involved. But when when there's a lot of quarterback, a good quarterbacks, a good quarterback draft, and you want to move up, you're say number twenty or number fifteen, and you're trying to move into the top ten, you know, and there's quarterbacks involved, there's more of a premium than what it was, especially this year. There, there wasn't any quarterbacks, so I mean. It's going to cost the Giants a decent amount next year to, um, to if they wanted to move up for a quarterback. So, time will only tell. Now, as far as the compensatory picks, all right, let's see here. I saw this this here. Uh, Evan Ingram, when he was still with the Giants, Ingram was a player who seemed to be perpetually on the trade block. The NFL's compensatory pick formula helps explain why he was a never dealt to another team. Had the Giants accepted anything less than a fifth round pick, they would have been losing value. Now, if somebody traded him a sixth round pick for him, I'd have a hard time believing. I, I could, I could see a fourth or a fifth being. I, 
being traded, the the what what he can bring and get, getting a six round trading for a six round pick. Uh, but uh, regardless, the Giants were never going to give get a proper return on investment for Ingram. He never lived up to his potential as a former first round pick, and the mistake made by drafting him could never be rectified through the compensatory pick formula. So, but I'll show you. I'll show you what they got with him now. Of course, most people remember this. How can we forget this? This 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 I'll probably remember for for, for my, my whole life. Across from him, Thomas makes the there he goes. Off the hands of Evan he catches Ingram. that ball. The Giants win Jones the football game. Two minutes, ten seconds left to go. Any better and Ingram right. could not make the catch. No, it was a perfect. He's got the guy beat by a yard. On the ball money. is freaking absolutely I mean, freaking perfect. All he has to do is catch the ball. I'm not saying it's the easiest catch in the world. I'm certainly not saying that. Lord knows I'm not saying that. Across from him, Thomas right. makes the but you do what you got to freaking do to bring that ball in. The Eagles had two timeouts. As you can see, the Eagles had two timeouts and a two-minute warning. But if he gets catches it, you know, maybe gets court, tackled inbounds, Clock runs down to the two-minute warning. The Eagles have two timeouts. The Giants take two knees. They call two timeouts, and they could probably put, almost run the clock out. Almost kind of run the clock out. And the Giants win that game. And if they wind up, wind up winning that game, they wind up going to the playoffs. But anyway, it is what it is. But but let's see here. This is what we got here. All right, this is um, this is from over the cap, I believe it is. Yeah, over the cap. All right. The compensatory picks here they got. They got now. Oh, uh, where are we at? Oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah, I got to scroll. got to find the Giants here. Where are we at? Nope, next one. There we go. Okay, the Giants now, what they got here. Okay, these are the guys that they lost. All right. They lost Evan Ingram. They lost Austin Johnson. They lost Lorenzo Carter. And they lost Keen Crossing. Okay. Now, um, they did sign Mark Glowinski. Okay, Glowinski, with their formula that they have, he's worth a six-round compensatory pick. We lost Austin Johnson. He got us a six-round compensatory pick. Uh, you know, but basically, they, we, 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 got, we lost one here. We got one. That, you know what I mean? So they cancel each other out. Okay. Then you look here. Obviously, you got Lorenzo Carter. All right, he signed for just three and a half million dollars. It's a shame, <laughs> but it is what it is. His contract's worth a seven round draft pick. We got Tyrod Taylor, so basically, okay, Tyrod Taylor and Lorenzo Carter cross each other out. All right, so that leaves us with Keen Crossan, all right, who we traded to get. Oh my god, so. The, the beauty of this is we, and then we let Keen Cross and go. I mean, sometimes you can do too much, okay? And, and this is one of those instances you did too much. You traded a pick to get the guy. So now you don't have the pick. And now you let the guy walk. So now you don't have the guy and you don't have the pick. Sometimes you can just do too freaking much. Absolutely unbelievable. The only thing you can say is that possibly, right, between like either Lorenzo Carter or, or Keen Crossing, you know, we're going to be getting uh, quite possibly we're, you know, on, you know, on target to get, shall we say, a seventh round. Evan Ingram, quite possibly we're going to be maybe getting a fifth round compensatory pick next season. All right. So let me show you here. All right. Now, the way it works, all right, they got their formula here. All right. This is AP annual per year, I believe it's called. I believe it is here. Average per year. I do apologize. Average per year. Okay. And this is like the percentage of snaps, I believe, that they took during the during the year. I'm not exactly sure. The only thing I can think of is this was the last the, the last year that he played. That's the percentage of snaps he took, okay? But, you know, so what, what it is is they, on the amount of money you make average per year, 
they, they assign a number to it, like 1976, 1977. Say $50 million is worth 1977. I'm not sure where they come up with that number. No idea. Deshaun Watson's $46 million. That's 1976. Derek Carr's only $40 million, so his is only worth 1973. See, Patrick Mahomes is $45 million. He's 1975. He's 45, 1975. Deshaun Watson is 46. He's 1976. So he's worth, you know, a little bit more. Then you get Kirk Cousins. He's only 35 million. So you got 1970. And then somehow they don't, you know, I don't know. He's 35, but he only got 1969. That I don't know. But what they do, and then, okay, is that, like, say, Russell Wilson, his contract is average per year is 35 million. The amount of, the average, I guess, the amount of snaps that he took was 94.5%. So they took the 94, they, they, they give a grade or a number, assign a number to this, 1969, plus the snap, the snaps, 94, 94, and they add the two of them together. They put them right here. Okay. So anything from, I guess, from 2073, I guess you're going to have even more, would be a third round pick. Okay. So if we come down, you know, we've got to start to 2073. And then they got a line right here, the third and fourth round cutoff, say, down in 1957. So then somehow in 1956, say, this starts a fourth round. Kevin, uh, Eddie Jackson, Ezekiel Elliott, whatever. If they were on, if they were, uh, they would be a fourth round pick, compensatory pick. So if the Cowboys lost Ezekiel Elliott, right, with his amount of snaps, with his average salary, this, that, and the other thing, he he's at, Let's see. He's in 1956. All right, so that's a fourth round. So 1956 down. Let's see here. Okay, 1956 to 1848. This is Akeem Hicks. 1849 is a fourth founder. I, I, some 49 and 48. Okay, splits the line between fourth and fifth round. So Jerry Hughes. If it, they were, if he was going to um, be a free agent and they were, uh, another team were to sign him, he would get them a fifth round pick. Kendall Fuller, fifth round pick. Micah Hyde, fifth round pick. All right, Trevor Lawrence. If uh, the Jaguars will lose him at free agency, he would be only worth, <laughs> yeah, a fifth round compensatory pick. Yeah. Okay. But let me show you here. This is where they got Evan Ingram. Okay, we got to go down here a little bit. He's kind of far down here, okay? So you see him right here? Now, his average per year is $9 million. He's only signed for one year, okay? He played 59% of the snaps. So you got, so the $9 million is signed at a number of 1730, okay? So 1730 plus the 59, all right, brings you over to 1789. So a 17, there's a few guys here, 1789, Chris Harris, Rashawn Jenkins, all right, Evan Ingram, a few guys here, 1789. So a 1789, okay, is a fifth round compensatory pick, which is what the, you know, the Giants are on target for, okay, which, which you know, eh, it's better than nothing, certainly better than nothing. You know, it's, it's you can also couple it up with maybe if you, you know, if, if you give somebody a sec, your second round and a fifth round and you want to move up a couple of spots, might be ideal. Might be an uh, ideal situation. All right, so then we got to go. Okay, this is the fifth and sixth round cutoff right here. Okay. Then you got, there's, qu there's quite a few here, the sixth round. There's a lot of sixth rounders here. Okay, here, here, here's this, whoops. Here is the, the sixth and seventh round cutoff. Now, here's the seventh, all right? Anything 1548 and below would be a seventh round compensatory pick. So now if you look right here, Uh, see, there's Lorenzo Carter, three and a half million dollars. Okay. So, I mean, you can look at it like either Lorenzo Carter and Evan Ingram are helping us out, get a compensatory pick, or where's King Cross in these here somewhere. So, anybody who is who is eligible for a, a um, compensatory pick is highlighted in, um, it's highlighted in the green. I might have gone by him. I'm not sure. Seventh round qualifying. Oh, here you go. He's all the way down at about 3.15, all right? 
he only did 11% of the snaps, right? So actually, I guess 11% doesn't count. I, I don't, I'm not, I, I don't even know. How 114 is 15%, that I, don't, I have no idea. So, but, but so basically he's a 1381, which is a seventh round. So now he just made it because you look here, right? 1380, he's 1381. If he was now like 1365, we wouldn't even be getting a pick for him. So, so, you know, we're, we're lucky. So hopefully in next year's draft, all right, we'll have two additional picks. Well, at least it's nice to know that even though Evan Ingram and Lorenzo Carter still are not on the team anymore, it's still nice to know that they're helping out the New York Giants. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time any day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants! Woo!